Good morning from the Disney Springs bus board. You guys know what that means. It means it's time for another resort tour. We're getting really down to the wire now. We've only got Fort Wilderness Contemporary and the Boardwalk Resort to do. We're gonna go do the Boardwalk today. I'm excited. Uh, I've never really been into the Boardwalk Resort, so this is gonna be a new experience for you and me together. Let's go get on the bus. In true King of the Bus fashion, the bus was just here waiting for me as I'm walking up. Oh, king of the bus. The kingiest of the busiests. King of the bus. King of the bus. Welcome to Disney's Boardwalk Resort. Earlier I said I've never been to this resort, which is sort of not true. I have been here before. I've just never done any exploring. I just walk through and go over to Epcot or to one of the other resorts. So this will be a first time going actually into the resort and seeing what it has to offer. Let's go find out. Just from looking at the outside of it, it seems like a very, very large resort. I wonder, is this still part of the boardwalk or is this part of Beach Club? No, I guess it is still part of boardwalk. Oh man, we got a lot of ground to cover. Here's the front entrance that leads into the lobby. There's also a set of stairs down here that lead out to the actual boardwalk. But we're gonna go inside and have a look around. Oh. These are some fancy chairs right here in the little vestibule. And some flowers? Oh. Seeing is believing. Wonderful. I don't know what this has to do with anything. Why is he holding a tiny horse? What is going on here? I guess that this is an actual piece of history here. This is kind of interesting. So we just walked in right there, and the first thing that we see is this chandelier. This is probably the most interesting chandelier I've ever seen. Are these myrrh horses? And why are these cherubs holding street lights? Look at how tall the ceiling is too. This is probably one of the most interesting things I've ever seen in my life. And then we turn and we look at the rest of the lobby. It's uh, very interesting. I don't know, is the boardwalk architecture like this with all kinds of old oil paintings and really fancy chandeliers. Oh, there's a model of a roller coaster here with a loop. It looks like a wooden roller coaster with a loop. Is this a model of a real roller coaster somewhere? It's pretty interesting. What in the world is going on over here? My goodness, what is this? Also, there's a fireplace here, which is very nice. But let's see if we can get a closer look at this loop-de-loop -loop here. Whoa, so I guess it was a real thing. This is the Flip Flap in Coney Island. Wow, that looks frightening. Back to these chairs, there's a little plaque over here that gives us a little bit more information about it. Well, I uh, can honestly say I never want to see nanny chairs ever again. So that way says Disney's Boardwalk, and then this way says Disney's Boardwalk Villas, a Disney Vacation Club resort. So I think we should probably head in that direction first. After looking at this map, we definitely have a long day ahead of us. So I think we are, we're gonna head in this direction, check out this little courtyard, check out this pool, then head back through, check out this pool, then this pool, then head back through and check out all the offerings on the boardwalk itself. Wow, a lot of stuff. Back to this chandelier. There's also these gigantic mirrors up there. What? What is going on at this resort? There's so many strange things to see. Like this thing. This is an amusement park finial. Very interesting. So from the finial, we're going into Disney's Boardwalk Inn. I guess we're headed towards the Bellevue room to listen to some radio broadcasts from the 30s and 40s. Everything in here has to be the most uniquely themed that I've seen out of any Disney hotel. And it's almost as if there's no stopping the theming of it. It is everywhere. And there's so many antique things too. Let's see if I can get this to, ooh, something happened in there. There it is. This is so interesting. So all I'm doing is turning this little knob here. Well, this is interesting. The Bellevue Lounge just kind of happens. Like there it is, right there. This is one of my favorite things, look at this. This is a board game. Eddie Cantor's game, tell it to the judge. And this is inside the Bellevue Lounge, which doesn't open until five. There's not really anybody in here, but this is a very interesting place for sure. 
all kinds of games and radios around. And then they also have games that you can play over here, like Parcheesi or Yahtzee or Shut the Box. Oh, this is a uh, this is a TV that looks like a mirror when it's not a TV. There's a little outside patio out here that people are eating on right now, overlooking the courtyard and the boardwalk down there. So from the Bellevue, I'm gonna head in this direction, see what we can find over here. I found elevators and guest rooms down there. Let's see, what else is there? Oh, I think we may have found one of the first courtyards. There are mirrors all over this resort. Were mirrors a big thing at Coney Island or at the boardwalk? Now let's head out this door here. Whoa, this got real secluded real fast. These are nice. This is fantastic. I think these are suites over here because they look very large. And there's this nice little secluded area that you could come out and sit, maybe have some coffee in the morning. I know that I say this every time I go to a resort, I'm like, oh, you could have coffee in the morning out here. I feel like I, this is something that I enjoy is going to a resort on vacation and sitting outside in the morning at sunrise, having a cup of coffee. I just noticed something over here that is blowing my mind. This is a room. They have their own little garden. Holy cow, what is going on here? So this is room 1201. This is room 1202. Each one of them has their own little garden out in front. This is amazing. How much do you think that these are a night? There's a garden. You can walk up and that's your front door to your room in the garden. Like you just walk through the garden. My mind is blown right now. It, it really is blowing my mind that this is, we're steps away from Epcot a bustling theme park right now. This is just so nice. There's more down here too. These gardens aren't as big as these over here. That last one looks like it's the biggest one. Then they start getting smaller and smaller as you go. These don't even have uh, gates around them. And then these do. Oh, but these are kind of like wider. This is so interesting to me. And then there's a pool over here too. This, uh, this resort is so nice. <laughs> what is going on right now? I haven't been to a resort anything like this at Disney yet. It's a very nice pool. What are these things? It's like weird looking globe things out front. This is bizarre to me that this is here at all. Yeah, I, I know that I've said this repeatedly, but this is really blowing my mind. It's just so nice and you're so close to a pool and it's so quiet over here. All right, that's as far as we can go in this section of the resort. Let's head back over and start to head over to the DVC section. This one will be perfect for somebody on their honeymoon. There's a big heart-shaped topiary in the front yard. So now that I've had my mind blown, let's head back the way that we came. These are the stairs that we came down out of the main lobby building. So the Bellevue Lounge is just inside of here. And we will head back through the main lobby, double check the map, and then head over into the DVC section. I kind of feel like we're at the White House. This is so nice looking. So we just came in through those doors and then over here is the Bellevue Lounge and we're gonna continue that way. But first I wanted to show you just across from the elevators is this weird potpourri cake that I've never seen anything like before in my life. What is that? All right, back at the Bellevue and now we're heading this way towards the main lobby again. We're just gonna go straight through the main lobby and head over towards the area that said DVC earlier. Let's head over here to where it says Disney's Boardwalk Villas and a Disney Vacation Club. And the first thing that we see when we walk back here is Dundee's Sundries. Basically like a little sundry store. And uh, I guess you can get Disney boutique purses here. This is kind of interesting, yeah. Special Disney H2O stuff, DVC shirts, books. This kind of feels like one of those stores in the airport where you can get basically whatever you want or anything that you forgot to pack. And of course some liquor and wine and stuff like that and little snacks. And then right outside the door is the fuel rod and a couple of pressed penny machines. Oh, look at Mickey all dressed up with his bow tie on and everything. These are fun. This one's not, not as themed as I would like for how themed everything else is in this resort. Like even the pressed penny machines are very well themed compared to this. So from Dundee's Sundries, we start to head in this direction. And I don't know where this is gonna take us. Like I said, it's kind of an adventure. 
Let's have a look out this little door over here. So right out the door is the pool. And this pool is hopping compared to the other pool. Now I don't know how to get to the pool. I'm gonna take an elevator. And I think that might be the best way, but there's a, a little frame over here with DVC members in it. These are all people that joined DVC in the early 90s. I wish that would be pretty neat to have your picture on the wall in here. So I took the elevator down and right across from the elevators is the gym. What a very nice looking gym in here. So this is the Luna Park Pool. And it sounds like a little party out here. They're having some sort of name that tune game or something like that. There's a slide. You got to see people going down the slide. There's a bar out here called Leaping Horse Libations. Let's go get a closer look. So here we are in the Luna Pool. And here is Leaping Horse Libations. Basically like a pool bar where you can get stuff like chili cheese dog or turkey sandwich. Just a few little snacks and light sandwiches or salads out here at the pool as well as a drink to have while you're sitting out around the pool. And as always, most of the drinks are the same throughout all of the resorts, but here they are. I'm telling you guys, this resort is the thing that nightmares are made of. Look at where the slide comes out of. That is frightening. There's also a spa over there, a hot tub, and there's a lot, a lot of seating out here. So a bathroom over there as well. And then a little, it looks like a splash pad area over here. Let's go investigate a little bit further. Well, there's a foosball table out here too. Oh, it's a, it's a little kiddie pool. And then there's a little playground back there too. Okay, I made it to the end of the pool and I'm actually looking at the swan and dolphin over there. I don't think that I can go this way to stay on property. So I have to go back in and then head back that way to get to the next pool. It really does blow my mind how much busier this pool is than the other pool. It sounds like this pool is a little bit more fun though with the name that tune and stuff like that that's going on. Back here at this end of the pool and we're turning in there is the gym and then here is the arcade. Let's go see what kind of games they have in the arcade. Oh, it's not that big of an arcade. Basically has the same stuff as every arcade, but it's just not very big at all. Somebody's playing Guitar Hero over there. This arcade is called Sideshow Games and the gym is called Muscles and Bustles. Okay, so now we are turning from Luna Park Pool back into these doors here and we are headed past Muscles and Bustles, headed to the elevators again. Or I guess we don't have to go up the elevators, but I do have to make my way around the resort to over there somewhere. I just passed by this sign. Muscles and Bustles is just around the corner right there as well as the elevator. There's a laundry room in here. I'm Lindsay Hi, Lindsay. And the adventure continues. We are still making our way around the resort trying to find out where the next pool is. It's definitely a strange feeling just walking through a hotel, not knowing where you are in relation to the outside. Like I can see a map in my head, but I don't know, I'm in this hallway somewhere. I will tell you guys this. I was just walking through this hallway and I passed by a door where I could hear somebody using their hair dryer inside their room, so. Might not be the most soundproof. I just found a door on the side of the hallway, opened it up, and here I am outside at a much, much quieter pool. It is, it is pretty impressive how much quieter each of these side pools are compared to that main pool with the slide. Basically, the door that I came out of is over there, and then this is the side pool. And they actually have, and we're gonna go have a look, but they've got a pool table over there and a ping pong table. Little teeny tiny spa, but if we continue to walk in this direction, there's a waterway, and that waterway leads over to Hollywood Studios. You can probably see this sign here that says Hollywood Studios, but Hollywood Studios is basically right there. It's within walking distance, just on the other side of that road there. And if we turn to our right, here you can see some people that are walking back from Hollywood Studios. There's Swan and Dolphin, and this is the Boardwalk Resort. It's amazing how much quieter it is just on the other side of this building here. Well, there's all kinds of stuff. There's cornhole, there's a pool table, there's ping pong. And this is the Boardwalk Community Hall here, where it looks like, just judging from this, you can rent movies here and then return them right there. This is pretty interesting. There's all kinds of stuff in here. They've got video games, they've got arcades and pinball machines, and a movie. Or I guess they're watching a TV show, the Disney Channel. It's amazing, and then all kinds of other little arts and crafts that you can do while you're here. Ceramic painting. And you can see here's the cost of doing the ceramics. That's pretty neat. All kinds of stuff to do in here. Wow. This would definitely be a fun one. Oh, look, you can make 
ears. Definitely a fun way to spend an afternoon, maybe a rainy day while at Disney. Just outside of the community hall is a board here that tells everything that's playing here at the Boardwalk Resort and where it's playing. I don't know where the Village Green is. I think that's outside the main lobby area. This pool also has uh, fun squares. No, they're like fun noodles, but they're square. You just take them in the pool. They're free for anybody to use. From that little secluded pool, we're turning and we're actually at the very, very end of the boardwalk property. One more thing to see, sports courts. Uh, they're not all, all sports courts. These are just tennis courts. But once you get to the tennis courts, that is the very last thing on the boardwalk property. Well, the next thing is Disney's Hollywood Studios. So let's go check out these tennis courts and then we'll head back in and go over towards the lobby and head out actually onto the boardwalk. The three hotels that are on the boardwalk and then Swan and Dolphin are probably the most convenient hotels for parks because they're within walking distance of two parks. You can walk to Disney's Hollywood Studios or you can walk to Epcot through the International Gateway. So that's, I don't know, that's, that's a big perk. Not to mention, once we get out to the boardwalk, you will see there is a huge variety of food and entertainment offerings here at the boardwalk. So here we are, all the way at the very end of the boardwalk property. You can kind of see through these trees over here. That's where the main lobby is. We came out of the little side pool over there and we are turning towards the tennis courts. One of the things that's fantastic about these tennis courts is they've got a little water fountain that you can fill up your water bottle at and uh, there, you don't even have to touch it or you can just drink water out of the water fountain and here are the tennis courts they're very nice if you wanted to play tennis you can get uh, tennis equipment from the community hall where we just were where all those arts and crafts areas were from the tennis courts we head back over to that really quiet pool area try to get back into the resort over there start walking back over to the main lobby and then we'll head out onto the boardwalk. You can get to the boardwalk this way. I'm just trying to get inside where the air conditioning is because it's hot in Florida now. Middle of February, 84 degrees. It's gonna be a hot year. So here we are back at the chandelier. And we're gonna try to get out and down to the boardwalk. Look at this nice little seating area out here. And this is that lawn where they were saying the movies were gonna be played at. Right here. They set up a big inflatable screen and you hang out on this lawn and watch a movie. Here's where I was in the main lobby, that weird chandelier is right behind those windows right there. And now we're out here on the lawn. And there's just a lot of stuff around here to see. So let's start off with the Wyland Galleries. Before we get to the Wyland Galleries, right through there, that's where the pool is, where that weird clown slide is. And then here is the Wyland Gallery. Oh where you can buy all kinds of works of art. Looks too expensive for me to go inside there. Looking back at the main lobby, pool with the weird clown slide is back there, Wyland Gallery is here. I don't know how we're gonna do this. I think what I'll do is, uh, there's Yacht and Beach Club over there. I think what I'll do is I will head out to the boardwalk, make a left, just kind of show you everything that's that way, and then we'll come back here and head that way. So this is what makes the boardwalk resort so unique, is that there are so many things all the way around the boardwalk to do, eat, or shop. And you've got transportation to the other resorts and to two separate theme parks via boat or via walking. Let's see what's down here. The first thing that we come to is the screen door general store. Into the screen door we go. Hmm, that's a heavy door. Well, there's all kinds of stuff in here. You can get little, it's like a little bakery. All kinds of drinks and ice creams, beers, wines, sliced meats, hot dogs, Lunchables. And as always, because it's a DBC resort, you can get pizzas and Stouffer's Original, Tater Tots, Kid Cuisine, Chicken Pot Pie. In the little bakery area, they've got holiday cookies for Easter already. Well, these are interesting. Or you can get flip-flop cookies. Oh, they have gigantic peanut butter cups with Mickey's on the top. This all looks so delicious. They also have all kinds of sundries in here so you can get your liquors over here. And then I think, yeah, there's a cigar cabinet right over there too so you can get liquor and cigars. Lots of little snacks and chips, dips, beef jerky, wine, any sort of toiletries you may have forgotten. There's also a bulk candy wall where you can just fill up a bag and they charge you by the pound. 
And then they have a whole section of housewares. You can get a, a boardwalk resort pillow. Suitcases and bags and a boardwalk resort shirt. And then we're heading over here to the general Disney merchandise. Look at this bike. It's one of those ones with the big old front wheels on it. And there's more general Disney merchandise back here. One thing that I always found interesting about the screen door is this is the only resort gift shop that has these vinyls for sale. Oh yeah. Oh, an entire vinyl of It's a Small World. Or is it like It's a Small World 50 times? Oh no, just four. The ultimate mega mix on the other side. Oh dear. So it turns out we may have gone into three different stores while we thought we were just inside of the screen door because as we walk down the boardwalk here, we can see a couple more signs. Here's the one with the bike with the big tire and that was called Character Carnival. Houseware and Mouseware. I like that. And then down here where those vinyls were, on the boardwalk, Thimbles and Threads, F. Thompson. Who's F. Thompson? Frank? Fred? Filbert? Right across from Thimbles and Threads. They have a couple of little booths out here and these look like they are carnival games. Like you can see the hoop toss right here. And I have a feeling that these will open up later in the evening. And then right next to Thimbles and Threads is Big River Grill and Brewing Works. So here's the menu for Big River. I feel like the last time that we ate here, it was okay. I don't remember what I had though. Maybe I need to try it one more time. Not today, but at some point. Right next to Big River, there is a DVC model villa that's open that you can go into. I'm not gonna go in there because then they'll try to sell me DVC. And then we head further into the boardwalk. Down here at the very end, past Big River, is Jelly Rolls, a dueling piano bar. Never been inside of this place, ever in my life. And then right across from there is Atlantic Dance, which is a nightclub. You can go dancing here. I don't know why it says video. Video, dance. Join the party, Atlantic Dance Hall, Video DJ Nightclub. What the heck is a Video DJ Nightclub? Never been inside this place either. One day we'll have to come here just to see what the heck it is. Here we are all the way at the end of the walkway for the boardwalk and you can see Swan and Dolphin. This is that little walkway that leads over to Disney's Hollywood Studios. And then we're turning back and heading the other direction down the boardwalk. You can see Jelly Rolls is to our right and uh, Atlantic Dance Hall is to our left. This is where we should have rented our Sea Racer. Look, there they are out there, racing around the lagoon. I think they probably rented it over here at the Yacht and Beach Club. You can rent all kinds of stuff over there, like pontoon boats and little speed boats and these little sea racers. You just gotta stay out of the way of the friendships that take you back and forth from Disney's Hollywood Studios or Epcot. But you can go all over the place over here. Now we're headed back towards the main lobby area, past Big River, past all of the uh, screen door and the other little shops that were over there. We're gonna stop off at the main lobby area and then we're gonna check out all this other stuff over here. And that's the direction. You can see Epcot right there. You can see Spaceship Earth peeking over top of the trees. I bet you this would be a good spot to watch Illuminations. Back at the main lobby in that back lawn where they show movies, probably one of the most interesting things I've ever seen. They're using a pressure washer to blow the leaves off of the lawn because this isn't real grass. This is fake grass right here. So as you can see, just pressure washing the leaves off. From the main lobby, we turn, and you can see we are underneath the Surrey bike rental area. So you can rent Surrey bikes. Here's the cost of the Surrey bikes. They're actually kind of expensive. And you can also rent wheelchairs on electric scooters here too. But still my favorite thing, little hidden Mickey on the headlight. Right across from the Surrey bike rental, there is a funnel cake booth. The docks where the boats come to take you to Hollywood Studios or Epcot. There's another pressed penny machine there. You can get airbrush tattoos or hair wraps, caricatures, another vacation club booth. Those seem to be all over the place down here, don't they? And then as we continue to turn, we can see flying fish and abracadabra. Let's go see if I can see the menu for flying fish. Just to give you a little bit more bearing, there's the lawn that they're pressure washing the leaves off of. Here's flying fish. And over here is the menu for flying fish. This is a huge, huge wine list for flying fish. And then they have, it doesn't look too bad. It looks very, very seafoody. So, oh, but they got filet in New York and a half rack of lamb. It's not bad, it kind of looks pretty good. And right next to flying fish, abracadabra, which I believe I can go inside and have a look around. I think. Nope, it, uh, it's not open yet. I believe it probably opens at four, but it's basically just a bar, as you can tell by the name, Abracadabra. 
and right next door, Trattoria El Forno, which actually has character breakfast. So here's a quick look at the breakfast menu, which is a character breakfast. I know it's kind of hard to read because of the glare. One day we're gonna have to come out here and do this character breakfast to see how it is. And then here is lunch and dinner. This is the kids breakfast menu. That makes sense. And then here is the kids lunch and dinner menu. Oh, kids can get a strip steak. Right across from Trattoria and Abracadabar is a place called Boardwalk To Go. Here's the menu for Boardwalk To Go. Basically hot dogs, chili cheese dogs, corn dogs, pulled pork sandwich, hot wings. Well, that's kind of interesting. You can get a milkshake out here. This is, there's kind of a lot of stuff for this being such a little teeny tiny booth. Back at Trattoria El Forno, and you can see there's also a pizza window, a walk-up pizza window here, where you can just get pizza to go. I don't know what it's called. It's Boardwalk Pizza Window. That's what it's called. <laughs> and here is the menu for the Boardwalk Pizza Window. Right across from the Boardwalk Pizza Window is Joe's Marvelous Margaritas. They should really change the name to Joe's Marvelous Margaritos. Sounds a little bit better, has a better ring to it. Here's a quick look at the menu at Joe's Marvelous Margaritos. Ooh, the roller coaster meltdown. Well, that sounds interesting. Just a pineapple smoothie, is that like a Dole Whip? I think it might be very similar. Pumpkin filled churro, eh? Right across from Joe's Marvelous Margaritos, there's the pizza window. And then we're turning even further to the Boardwalk Bakery. I wonder what this is. I think it's just a regular old bakery. Let's have a look inside. See what kind of stuff they're baking up. Pretty much just a bakery, but they also have sandwiches and stuff that you can get in here. Some fruit cups, water, beer, orange juice. Here's a look at the menu that they have over here. And from the Boardwalk Bakery, we turn to the most amazing thing on the entire boardwalk, the size of this trash can. It's huge. Look at the size of this thing. Even compared to that trash can over there, this thing is giant. One of the things that I think is really interesting about the boardwalk bakery is they, uh, they have a smelter out front somewhere. So a thing that produces the smell of a bakery, just like they do on Main Street USA at Disney World or at Magic Kingdom. I would hate to be staying in one of these rooms above it and have it to smell that all the time. It would make you so hungry. Just want to come down and eat all kinds of pastries and stuff. So right next to the Boardwalk Bakery is Ample Hills Creamery. Oh, and you can get special Star Wars ice cream flavors here. Do you think the characters in Star Wars really enjoy ice cream? Like is Kylo Ren like, oh god, I gotta get me some, some Rocky Road. What is this, salted dark chocolate ice cream? That sounds really good actually. Here we are inside of Ample Hills. This place is fun. Oh no, the Earful Tower. Rest in peace. Here's all the special ice cream pints for Star Wars. And then here's all of the different kinds and different flavors of ice cream that they have over here. I like that they have fancy signs for them. Oh my goodness. PB wins the cup sounds so delicious. Oh man, all of these things sound good. Baked, unbaked sounds good. Eh, I could go without cotton candy. Ooh, ooey gooey butter cake. Oh my goodness gracious. Holy cow. Oh man. Malty salty pretzel crunch. Jeez Louise. There are 16 flavors here. There's more over there. I don't want to interrupt their mortaring though. Here's all of the different flavors that they have. Oh man. I really want some ice cream right now. And then here's the different prices for the ice cream. Oh, you can get an ice cream flight? That's amazing. So as we turn from Ample Hills, we can see right across the way, there's a couple of photo booths out here so you can take a picture of yourself on boardwalk photo paper to commemorate your trip to Disney's boardwalk. So last but not least, right next to Ample Hills is the ESPN Club. Let's have a look at the menu. So here's a look at the menu at the ESPN Club. 
They're playing some loud sports over top of me right here. I have a feeling that they show all kinds of different sports. So if you're looking to watch a sports game, maybe come to the ESPN club. Sounds like they're watching the, uh, the Olympics. Oh yeah, look, you can kind of see it on that TV right there. All of the beers and wines that they have to offer. There you have it. That's everything that you can do here at Disney's Boardwalk Resort. And you can tell this resort is giant. And there are a lot, a lot of options here for where to eat or what to do. Wow, it just blows my mind. That first pool that we went to is just behind the ESPN club here. And then of course, if we continue on the path, you can actually see where the boardwalk ends. No more boards goes on to asphalt. And off to the left here is a little gazebo area. And I know that sometimes people get married over there. And if we continue the walk around, not only do we get to the Yacht and Beach Club, but also to the International Gateway and the entrance to Epcot. I came all the way down to this bridge so just through the trees right there, you can see that is Epcot. This is the International Gateway entrance to Epcot. And if I turn to my right, just through these trees, you can see the ESPN Club. So just kind of gives you an idea of how close the Boardwalk Resort is to Epcot. So that might be a little bit of a factor in you planning out your trip on where to stay because there are fireworks at Epcot and you will probably hear them very loud here at the Boardwalk Resort. Also, if you're staying near that pool, I think you could probably see illuminations from the pool. I don't know though, I've never done it. If anybody has, please leave me a comment in the comment section down below. This kind of gives you a good overview of everything. There's Beach Club, here's Yacht Club, there is Dolphin, Swan's on the other side of the boardwalk here, and here's Boardwalk, through there is Epcot. So I never actually found the running map for this, but I believe it's probably just run around the boardwalk and over by Yacht and Beach Club and everything and then back over here to the boardwalk. I'm just assuming. I actually have seen quite a few people running that exact path because there is a race this weekend. They're just getting ready for it. Here we are back at the uh, pressure washed leave lawn. I don't know if you guys can see this over there but there is a uh, bride taking photos for her wedding. It's got to be so hot out here but they're getting ready to have a wedding out here. I noticed the uh, name of the community hall where it's fairest Wheelers, Ferris W. Healers Community Hall. Ferris Wheelers. I came back out by this pool because I knew that I had seen the running trail somewhere. And there it is, I was right. Yeah, you just run around over by Yacht Club, Beach Club, Beach Club Villas, and then back over here. So you're basically just running around the boardwalk. It's only 0.8 miles. Seems like it would be longer than that. Came into the bathrooms over by the pool. You guys know what I'm looking for. This toilet paper. What is this? Oh, see this isn't bad. This is sort of thick. Nice-ish toilet paper, it's still sort of single ply. I wonder what was going on at the Yacht Club that one day. That was terrible toilet paper. This stuff, not too bad. Back up on the balcony here, heading back into this area with the weird chandelier. And I think we've covered everything at this resort. I just want to check the map one more time. And then we're out of here. Looks like the only thing that I missed is M here. A croquet court. Well, this seems to be the best shot that I can get of the boardwalk sign without a bus in the way, because as you can see, they're loading up Disney Cruise Line bus, and then there's a Magical Express over here to my right, just waiting to load people up. Sad day, taking people either on a cruise or back to the airport. I guess it's either a sad day or a happy day, one or the other. But either way you put it, oh, what the heck was that noise? Either way you put it, this has been a trip to Disney's Boardwalk Resort. It is a very, very nice resort, especially that area over there where they had the little gardens out in front. I want to stay in one of those rooms, uh, maybe around New Year's. Maybe you could watch the uh, New Year's Eve fireworks from your front porch or your back porch or something like that. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if you can see the Epcot fireworks from anywhere, any room that you've stayed in at the Boardwalk Resort. But with that being said, we are off and we will see you guys tomorrow. Hi, I'm Sonia. I'm Cooper. And now, now it's time, time to pay the, pay the price. price.